from the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, it's the Cube covering HoshoCon 2018. Brought to you by Hosho. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cube special live coverage here in Las Vegas for the first ever blockchain security conference, really discussing security as an industry. It's called HoshoCon, put on by Hosho. We're here with the co-founder and CEO of Hosho, and, and some main supporters of sponsoring this project or event, HoshoCon. We have Yosem Kwan, who's the CEO and co-founder. Good to see you. Good to see you, good to be here. Hey, thanks for putting this on. I interviewed Hartej, uh, your co-founder in Toronto at the Futures Conference. We had many great conversations on theCUBE, but when we talked about HoshoCon, this conference, he really wanted to do it as an industry conference, not as just a Hosho event. Mm -hmm. This is really key to you, you guys' culture here at Hosho, your company. Yeah. Take a minute to explain the event, why this event, why the format, and that it's open. Uh, so, I mean, basically, you know, like we've been to just so many events over the, the like I think we've done like 80 events this year, and uh, the topic of conversation is, you know, around investing, it's around ICOs, it's around all these things, and security touches all of those. And uh, I just feel like, and we all felt it, and like you, the other security companies felt it too, that it just wasn't a topic that was discussed in great enough depth, especially uh, given the the increasing amounts of hacks and theft and all these problems that uh, relate directly to security and uh, I, I just feel like it's really important for us as an industry to discuss you know like what uh, security practices are good, what should be done, uh, how you should do them, what resources are available to companies uh, to learn more about security, and what resources don't exist and need to be developed, and that needs to be done in a collaborative way. Well, congratulations and props to you guys for really sponsoring this and taking the leadership role for, in the industry, but again, you guys are humble and it's a good, good way to do it, is to have these conversations. So, thank you for doing that, appreciate it, and thanks for having the Cube here, we, we really appreciate it. The question I want to ask you is, I've noticed the three here. First of all, a lot of smart people here, so it's like a, it's not a massive, no IPO, ICO pitch competitions. This is really down and dirty security. Yep. Okay, black hat, white hat, but it's kind of a, uh, an inner culture vibe. It's the community coming yep. together. But also two kind of tracks are developing. There's the crypto security, and then there's cyber security threads coming out, because you said it's touching on all these points. Um, and you, you're hearing, even hearing a little bit of IOT and hardware. We had Rivets on earlier, the CEO, Steven Sprague. So a lot of different solutions, a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different vulnerabilities. Can you explain the landscape of how the players are here, what are they coming from, what's okay, their background? Yeah, absolutely, I mean, like there are definitely a lot of brilliant minds here, and that was one of the goals of HoshoCon, is to bring people that are of all different, uh, you know, parts of the industry, whether they're, you know, they're lawyers, or they're information security experts, or they're, uh, you know, regulators, or they're it just uh, it developers, bring them all uh, into the same room and to kind of discuss these problems that, you know, plague all of us, and, uh, you know, a developer is going to have a much different um, perspective and solution than a lawyer, and uh, but those things can work together, and uh, those the, the problems might still be the same. And so uh, we've been in the industry for just like uh, even though Hosho's a young company, the uh, people that are on our team, myself, I've been Bitcoin, I got into Bitcoin eight years ago. Um, I, like we just have this network of people that are uh, in the industry have seen the kind of like cyclic nature of you know like a, a, a gigantic influx of people come in. Uh, these problems. Uh, arise where you know entrepreneurs are like really focused on like growing getting traction and then uh, they focus less on their security, it goes to the wayside, and then these big hacks happen. And uh, then the, the industry kind of smartens up and everything you know, starts getting a little bit closer to uh, what seems you know, maybe safe or like, approachable for a, a growth trajectory, and then another gigantic influx happens, and then the same thing. And so what we really need to do is, like, when that next big influx happens, is to have standards in place, to have things that uh, an entrepreneur can just turn to and be like, okay, this is what I need to do if I want to be considered credible in this in this industry and I want to protect my users and my investors. Can you talk about some of the top conversations that are going on here? Because I think that's a great point. People want you know, legitimacy, they want solutions that work, that are credible and then maintain kind of, I won't say enterprise grade, but you know, commercial grade, reliable, so that people can focus on building up their companies and or preparing for the growth. What are some of the top 
conversations? Uh, a lot of it's just uh, all learning about what other people do. Like even like with rivets, like we're putting, uh, they're using the trusted execution space on like you know what's already on billions of devices, and uh, you know basically uh, letting people know that that space exists on this hardware and that they can be used for uh, all these different purposes to validate you know, data going, going in. And uh, you know, like there's been conversations around custody. Uh, I think I was on a panel earlier today about custody, and basically the way I felt like uh, it left off, and the conclusion was that there is a long way to go on custody, but it is incredibly crucial. Uh, big institutional players that want to like enter the the markets and uh, want to put their money into a regulated uh, custodian. There, it's difficult to do so, uh, even with registered custodians existing, because uh, the limitations that they have in, in understanding the technology and being able to provide support for all the different digital assets that exist. So we're reporting this morning, the SEC, the SEC here in the US has tightened the noose on the ICO funded startups. I think the story originated out of Decrypt Media, but essentially, this SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, is cracking down. And they're going back and saying, you got to refund some of that money yep. because of violations. That's one regulatory thing, but there's also, there's software that writes these smart contracts. You guys are in that business. The software is software money. Security is critical. How stable is this becoming in your mind? What's the to-do items? How should a company who wants to either use the ICO process or and or use token economics to fuel their business model they got to be secure on the business front. Yep. Uh, so uh, basically, smart contracts uh, were so new when we first got into it that uh, people just didn't know how to develop uh, securely in them. And so there were just like critical mistakes being made all over the place. We've seen uh, over the last year a lot of improvement on that front. More libraries are being developed and people are writing consistently more uh, secure contracts. Uh, but now what we're seeing is contracts are getting increasingly complex. And uh, with additional complexity, because it's software, there's uh, uh, room for you know, more problems. And uh, I think that uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, an interesting challenge going forward. There's, there's things like formal verification. I think that has a huge uh, place in the future f uh, regarding smart contracts. But uh, it's, it, there's a lot of tools that need to be developed. Uh, that's one of the things that w we worked on and we're really excited about is Meadowsuite uh, because that's software that lets you develop smart contracts. We built it uh, intentionally with security analysis in mind and then we made it more full featured to become a development tool for uh, writing smart contracts and uh, developing on protocols. And so I think the, the more of those type of things that you see come out that bring it more to feature parity to uh, what software developers are used to if they were say building a web application, uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, adhere to good practices and uh, write secure code. And also kind of not have to do manual audits. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to get to some sort of automation. Absolutely, framework. yeah. I mean, we've already automated a lot of the things that we do, but um, and there's still a lot left to do, but we know that there is a lot left that can be automated, and we hope that uh, eventually the tools are just put into developers' hands where they can they yeah. can do most of that work themselves. As in, take your uh, CEO hat off from Hosho for a minute, put your industry hat on. Okay. What are your what are some of the names here that uh, and conversations topics that you find interesting personally? Okay. Um, I mean, uh, a lot of the people that we brought here are, are like our friends. We know them, right? And so, like, uh, like we're, I was talking <laughs> kind with of celebrities. Uh, I was talking with like Token Market earlier, and like you know, the, like we're we're partners with them, and they, like they're really they're really great guys, and like some of the stuff that they're trying to do, and like uh, you know, just like listening to what other uh, companies are trying to do, like with security tokens, that seems to be the thing that's really moving forward. Um, and uh, I'm I'm kind of fascinated. Like we try to stay agnostic, you know, like yeah. when we're uh, like looking at all these different technologies, but then like sometimes someone explains something to you and you're just like, oh man, that's, that's really cool. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> like <laughs> and, there's some, and, some, and there's some good minds here. Uh, what's the coolest thing you've seen so far? Um, hmm, well I've, I've been locked in, uh, I've been locked behind doors in uh, a lot of meetings so far, but uh, the, let's see, um, I think uh, what Unchained Capital is working on is really sweet. They uh, basically, I mean like, well I just think their business model makes a lot of sense. Like basically they just uh, hold your, your, your crypto so you uh, maintain 
uh, exposure to it, and then they'll they'll issue you a loan. They can like turn around a loan like in 24 hours. You just like hand them a bunch of Bitcoin, and then they'll just give you cash, and then you can, um, you know, you have that cash, and then you still maintain exposure to the crypto. If the uh, if you pay it all back, you get your crypto back. <laughs> so it's collateralized. Yeah, and crypto. It's, exactly. And I mean, like that makes perfect sense to me. Like, you know, it's just like it, it, as long as you can liquidate that crypto on Bitcoin, Ethereum, like those are big enough markets now where you can easily liquidate. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks for putting on this event. And uh, I want to get back to Hosho. How's this business going? You're the CEO, Commander in Chief. What's going on with the company? How's things going? Yeah, Quick I update. mean, well, <laughs> everything's crazy, right? Like we're, uh, we're moving quickly and uh, the next steps um, are Asia. We really want to uh, basically penetrate those markets. Uh, only, we, we don't have as much coverage there as we would like, but having uh, spent some time there earlier this year doing uh, some reconnaissance, uh, it's, it's a crazy, crazy space over there. There's a lot of action happening, there's a lot of adoption, uh, people are really enthusiastic about it, but uh, security almost seems like six months to a year behind North America and Europe as far as uh, what exchanges are requiring, what investors are like demanding of their, their portfolio companies, and so, so I think uh, that now that they've had such major hacks happen over the last six months, uh, they're starting to realize, yeah, you know. Major hacks, talking about 60 million. I mean, I heard numbers up at 300 plus million. Yeah. I mean, it's not, these are, it's not like five dollars out of your wallet. This yeah, is like yeah, massive. like uh, like over a billion dollars. Yeah, it has been, yeah, mm -hmm. stolen in some capacity and like, it's 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 been pretty crazy, yeah. So uh, the I think. Where's big vulnerability? <laughs> uh, the exchanges, is it the D apps? Where's the holes? Uh, they're, they're all over the place, but the, the biggest numbers definitely come from exchanges. Uh, exchanges just need to be far more responsible and uh, like, uh, just, uh, I feel like a lot of it is like just negligence. They're growing so quickly that they don't pay attention to uh, you know, putting resources into educating their staff on really simple security practices. Uh, you know, things like phishing and social engineering, like so, uh, things that were good so, uh, security practices yeah. still are good security practices. And uh, a lot of those attacks are are not even anything like uh, some new exploit of a new technology. It's the same kind of thing of like uh, phishing, social engineering, uh, SIM swapping, um, you know, poor user access control, bad passwords. Um, I mean, the basics. Yeah. But this is what growth does to you, to your point earlier. As more people start feeling growth, as more exposure surface area wise, yeah. new dynamics are kicking in. Well, I'm starting to see new exchanges that are popping up that um, are you know, taking security very seriously, and th the way they're treating it is that is their differentiator, but uh, in my mind, like security shouldn't be a differentiator. Everybody should, you know, like if <laughs> yeah, you're an exchange yeah. and you're holding massive amounts of other people's assets, you should take security yeah. very seriously. That should just be a, a default, a standard. Yeah, yeah it's, you, it's, you have to be a differentiating strategy to, with security, it's not, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, marketing 101, you shouldn't be different. It should be standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if that's the state of the art, this is the problem. This yeah. highlights the problem. It does, Sam. Yeah. All right, so what's, what's the uh, future for this event? How do you guys see this unfolding? Obviously, it's the first inaugural event here, Hosho Khan. How do you see it evolving? Uh, I think a lot of um, conversation should hopefully spur from this, and uh, I th we want to make this a, a yearly event, uh, so we're definitely going to take a lot of the feedback from uh, people that attended and uh, see what they want, uh, what they really enjoyed, what they really want to talk about, and even I think uh, a lot, of, since we're recording all of the talks, we'll be putting them up online some, at some point, and uh, I think it'd be really good to see like, what the transition is uh, like next year from like, uh, where we were in some of these problems and addressing those problems um, you know, a year from now. Like, I, I think that will be really exciting. You guys are expanding in Europe, Hosho, good job with that. Uh, who's the kind of client uh, clientele you guys have? Is it ICOs, is it companies, is it enterprises? Who are your target customers? Uh, so we have a lot of companies that are ICOs, for sure. Uh, we have uh, more exchanges and protocols uh, joining those ranks. And then uh, we are trying to move into to, um, enterprise as well. We made a partnership with Telefonica and uh, developed a, a partnership with them to be able to sell to more enterprise clients and what they need. And what's your value proposition that you guys are offering? Um, <laughs> we are, well, we, we do smart contract audits, we do penetration testing. Uh, those are things that uh, a lot of companies in this, in this space need. Uh, and then also, like, we've been uh, helping with, like, security architecture and um, cryptocurrency and risk tooling. assessments. And, and tools for developers. And tooling, yeah, we're trying to do our part. I mean, we can't and won't do it alone, but uh, we, we try to develop things that, if we develop anything that's useful from a security perspective, we try to make it available for everyone. 
Yosef, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time and congratulations on the great event. Thank you. HoshoCon, uh, sponsored by Hosho and others in the industry. It's an industry event, it's not just their company, it's their friends all coming together to solve the major problems with raw security, making it standard, making it safe, and supporting the growth with the community. This is theCUBE covering live here in Vegas. I'm John Furrier. Stay with us for more CUBE coverage after this short break. Thank <laughs> you.